We will now talk about how phonons contribute to the uh, conduction of thermal energy. So if you have a rod that has two ends at different temperatures, so one side is cold, one side is hot, there will be heat flow from the hot side to the cold side uh, until thermal equilibrium is reached. So in this case we have a temperature gradient uh, on the x-axis that is positive and the flux of heat is in the negative direction and there is a cross-sectional area a. Uh, so the law of thermal conduction is the heat flux J is equal to minus a coefficient called thermal conductivity kappa dt dx. So in three dimensions we can write this as J's, a J vector heat flux is equal to minus kappa gradient of temperature. So what is J? It is the flux of thermal energy, it is the heat that flows per area, per unit time. Kappa is our thermal conductivity and if you look uh, at the Ohm's law, J is equal to minus sigma gradient of voltage. Uh, this is basically um, uh, the current density is related to the voltage uh, change uh, using the electrical conductivity sigma that's Ohm's law. So we have a similar situation here uh, when we talk about uh, thermal conduction. So now you can see that if J is negative, which is the case here, dt dx is positive and kappa is going to be positive. So dt dx is positive, kappa is positive, so that we get a negative heat flux. Now <clears throat> the mechanism of heat conduction it's either carried by electrons in metals or phonons in insulators so we will talk about uh, phonons uh, contribution to heat conduction uh, in this case so heat conduction with phonons we have the flux of thermal energy which is equal to the flux of particles that carry this energy uh, and it's energy carried by one particle. So energy carried by a particle is uh, C times delta T, where C is our heat capacity per particle. So it's the derivative of the uh, energy of the system with respect to temperature at constant volume divided by the number of particles. So it's 1 over N. So flux of particles will be the number of particles that uh, travel through a cross-sectional area per unit time. So if you have an uh, n number of particles per volume, the number density, multiplied by the distance they travel in the x direction, multiplied by the cross-sectional area A, that gives us n times the volume, which is the number of particles, uh, capital N. So we will see that n delta x times a will be equal to n times the volume which is capital N the number of particles so that is traveling uh, across uh, a cross-sectional area a uh, per unit time delta t so you can see that the areas will cancel and we have delta x traveled uh, in unit time delta t that is basically the average speed of these particles so it's going to be n times uh, average value of Vx. So Vx, our average speed, is uh, basically the mean free path divided by mean free time. What is the mean free uh, time? It's the time it takes between two uh, consecutive collisions on average. It's the distance, uh, uh, and mean free path is the distance a particle travels uh, be, uh, in between collisions uh, on average. So L is related to uh, tau by L is equal to Vx, average value of Vx times tau. So uh, for J we have uh, minus N Vx times uh, C delta T. So this energy carried by particle and flux of uh, particles. And we have uh, the delta T in uh, one uh, mean free path is delta T over delta X multiplied by the mean free path. So for the heat flux, we have minus NVx C dt dx multiplied with L, and that's going to be minus NVx C dt dx Vx times tau. So you can see that the heat flux is uh, minus N average speed Vx squared tau C, which was our heat capacity per particle, times dt dx. 
Now, uh, in thermal motion, we have a, a random direction in velocity. So v squared is vx squared plus vy squared plus vz squared. So uh, if you consider the motion of um, a particle in between collisions, basically it's randomized uh, due to uh, thermal energy. So on average, we have v square average is equal to vx square average, vy square average plus vz square average, and they should all be the same equal to 3 vx square average. So uh, for the v vx square average, we can basically substitute average speed square v, uh, v square average or uh, and uh, and also I'm uh, basically uh, making this approximation that this is equal to average value of v square um, minus n over 3 average speed square c tau uh, dt dx now n times c the heat capacity per particle number of particles per volume will be equal to heat capacity per volume and l our mean free path was given by uh, v times uh, tau uh, in three dimensions. So we have then minus 1 over 3, uh, the heat capacity per volume, average speed v, L dt dx. So this uh, basically tells us that the uh, thermal conductivity kappa is one third Cv v times L and is temperature dependent through the temperature dependencies of uh, heat capacity and uh, mean free path. So this is basically elementary kinetic theory we're going through to calculate this thermal conductivity. Now, what is the temperature dependence of thermal conductivity? Well, we have to consider the temperature dependence of the parameters that goes into this equation. That is heat capacity per volume, the average speed V, and the mean free path L. Now, we have already discussed the temperature dependence of Cv. It's constant at high temperatures, de long pretty low, and it decreases as T cube at low temperatures, uh, the Bayer uh, model. So basically accounts for this uh, behavior. Now, uh, the propagation speed of phonons is insensitive to temperature. It is d omega dk. It's basically given by the dispersion relation, omega versus k. L, the mean free path, uh, strongly depends on temperature and it's the distance a phonon travels in between collisions. Therefore, this mean free path is determined by collusion processes in the crystal. So we have to focus on what kinds of collusion processes uh, will affect the mean free path. So we have phonon, phonon collusions, phonon crystal imperfection collusions and phonon crystal boundary collusions. Now, if you go back to our uh, discussion in the harmonic approximation, uh, we have uh, the superposition uh, of uh, different solutions. Phonons do not interact. A phonon of energy h bar nu, h bar omega, when added to a crystal, vibrating at angular frequency omega, will move through the crystal as if the other phonon were not there. So these are independent solutions. So uh, we have the superposition principle. Linear combination of uh, solutions is uh, a another solution. And that's basically due to the nature of the differential equation that we obtain for the equation of motion. Now, so this is mathematically because if uh, the displacement u of the ant vector at k1 omega 1 is a solution and displacement of the ant vector k2 omega 2 is also a solution, then their linear combinations also form a solution. So this means that in a three-dimensional crystal, phonons added at one end of the crystal will reach the other end without being scattered. If we keep on doing this, uh, once equilibrium is reached, we will have the rate at which phonons are added to the crystal will be equal to the rate at which phonons leave the other end. Okay, so the distance between these faces will have no effect on the problem and kappa will be infinite. So kappa will be equal to one third CVVL because uh, a, a phonon that is added on one end without interacting other phonons 
uh, goes through the crystal and leaves from the other end, it means we have an infinite mean free path and infinite thermal conductivity. Well, we know that this is not the case in real crystals. Kappa must be finite, and this can only be explained by the fact that we have enharmonic terms in the crystal potential. So, uh, when we write the equation of motion, ma equals f times un plus 1 plus un minus 1 minus 2 un, f was our force constant, but then we also have a quadratic term h times un plus 1 plus un minus 1 minus 2 un square, etc. So these higher order and harmonic terms will uh, cause a finite thermal conductivity. So let's take a look at the phonon-phonon collisions in more detail. When one phonon sees the other, they scatter due to enharmonic interactions between them. So as we have discussed uh, just now, if the phonons arise only from purely harmonic oscillations, where you have a quadratic uh, potential, then all normal modes are independent. There will be no interactions, no dynamic interactions between phonons. They will move independently of each other, and this will imply an infinite thermal conductivity. At the beginning, we only considered small atomic displacements so that we could neglect higher order terms. However, when the atomic displacements are considerably large, this assumption is no more valid, and the cubic term, which we neglected, that's the enharmonic term, uh, causes their mutual scattering. So phonon-phonon collisions will become more important at high temperatures when we have large atomic displacements. So the temperature should be greater or comparable to theta dy so that all um, vibrational modes uh, or most vibrational modes are excited. So at high temperatures, the number of the excited phonons was given by the Planck distribution. Average value of n is 1 over e to the h bar omega over kt minus uh, one and uh, when we have a high temperature h bar omega over kt will be small so we have the taylor's expansion e to the x for x small is approximately given by one plus x so we can write here one plus h bar omega over kt minus one the ones cancel so it becomes kt over h bar omega so what we, what we find is that the number of phonons to collide with increases as linearly with temperature um, so that the frequency of the collisions uh, will increase with temperature. So the phonons will encounter more collisions. Tau, our mean free time, is basically related to 1 over the collusion frequency. And since the collusion frequency is related to the number of phonons and uh, linearly proportional to temperature, the mean free a time will be proportional to 1 over t. And we said that the average speed of the phonons is d omega dk, average value of d omega dk, is independent of temperature. Tau depends on temperature uh, as 1 over t. The mean free path changes with temperature as 1 over t. Uh, the other possibility, phonon crystal imperfection collisions. Well, we have uh, a loss of periodicity in the crystal uh, due to uh, these point defects, impurities, uh, or um, two-dimensional defects. Uh, we may have dislocations, we may have grain boundaries, we may have voids, three-dimensional defects, etc. So these crystal imperfections will act as scatterers for phonons as they uh, partially destroy the periodicity. So, for example, in the case of impurities, the greater the density of impurities, the greater the scattering and shorter the mean free path will be. Okay. So, for uh, the other candidate, phonon crystal boundary collisions, at low temperatures below, for example, 10 Kelvin, because we don't have many phonons, phonon-phonon collisions, and phonon imperfection scattering will become ineffective. So, in the first case, phonon-phonon collisions, we have less number of phonons. In the second case, few phonons which are excited have long wavelengths. So, um, because the temperature is uh, small, uh, we, we're going to have low energy h bar omega, uh, and uh, with this low energy, they're going to have long wavelengths, and therefore, they are not effectively scattered by impurities, uh, which are smaller in size than the wavelength. Well, it's actually well known that the strength of the scattering of a wave by an object depends on the ratio of the diameter object to, of the object to the wavelength, so d over lambda determines the strength of the uh, 
scattering, the smaller this value is, the weaker the scattering will be. So in the low temperature regime, the primary scattering mechanism will be with the boundary of the specimen, so it's going to be geometrical effects. Why? Because the mean free path approaches the specimen uh, diameter. The wavelengths of the excited phonons are very long, comparable to the size of the specimen, and therefore the mean free path uh, basically saturates at the specimen diameter and becomes independent of temperature. So if we summarize these effects, so for the mean free path, at low temperatures, we have long wavelength phonons, very few long wavelength phonons. The wavelength is comparable to the size of the specimen. The, the dominant scattering mechanism is phonon uh, boundary collusion, so boundary effect saturates the mean free path at the size of the specimen. At higher temperatures, we have a large number of uh, phonons, and the number of phonons we obtain is proportional to T, the mean free time is proportional to 1 over t, and mean free path is proportional to 1 over t because um, the, the speed of the phonons, uh, the propagation speed, is determined by the dispersion relation. So, uh, in this regime, in the high temperature regime, we have both phonon phonon and phonon impurity scattering mechanisms become important because the phonon wavelength become comparable to uh, the dimensions of the impurities. On the other hand, we have uh, for the heat capacity uh, per uh, volume, uh, 3 and K, so this would be uh, de long petit law that that's the total heat capacity let's say just you just have to divide it by volume to obtain heat capacity per volume uh, so the classical result de long petit law tells us in temperature independent heat capacity at low temperatures we have d by t cube law that is the contribution of several uh, vibrational modes um, as we uh, approach uh, higher temperatures, the number of contributions will increase. So d by t cube law tells us that the heat capacity should be dropping to zero at temperature goes to zero. On the other hand, for a thermal conductivity, which is 1 over 3 CV VL, V is temperature independent, L is temperature dependent, and it is at low temperatures uh, constant, but CV changes as T cube, so the thermal conductivity changes as T cube. And it's due to the geometrical effects, the saturation of the mean free path and d by t cube law for CV. On the other hand, at, in the high temperature regime, we have the mean free path proportional to 1 over t that is due to phonon, phonon and phonon impurity uh, scattering mechanisms. And um, so that's basically dominated by temperature dependence of L. And at the same time, we have a constant CV here. We have de long petit low classical CV, and therefore we have a decrease in thermal conductivity. So around uh, the Debye temperature, 10 to 20 Kelvin typically, we find uh, there's going to be a peak in the thermal conductivity versus uh, temperature.